Raisin Bran. The cereal with the fruit already in the package. Oh boy, raisins and toasted bran flakes. Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Today, Kellogg's Raisin Bran, the cereal that comes out of the box with the fruit already in the package, brings you Wild Bill Hickok. Transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, The Timber Trail. Hear that? That's a United Airlines DC-7 mainliner ready for takeoff. Now hear this. You can get a three-inch plastic model of this DC-7 mainliner free right inside packages of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Golly, think how much fun it'll be to have a silvery model of America's fastest commercial transport plane. And you can make a swell hanger for your DC-7 right out of the box. So get your DC-7 mainliner model now free right inside special packages of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. <laughs> United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles did most of their work for the law in the flat desert and prairie country. But once in a while, their job took them into the country of the tall trees. Once it took them into deadly danger when they followed the timber trail. the size of that tree, Bill. I'll bet there's enough lumber in that one to build a whole house. You haven't had much experience with timber, Jingles. There's a lot more than that. There's enough wood in there to build five ordinary houses. Look out now. It's about to drop. If it falls the wrong way, you better be ready to run. That's good, All right. Now stand back, everybody. Timber! Take my chances with all hoots and rustlers. I'd rather get shot than have a few tons of lumber falling around my ears all the time. It's just like any other business, Jingles. You get used to it. Well, Scotty, let's have our little talk, shall we? Yeah, let's do that, Wild Bill. And I hope you can make more sense out of the problem than I've been able to. What problem? What are you talking about? You don't think we rode all the way up here just to smell the pine trees, do you, Jingles? You see, Scotty's been having some trouble lately. I might have known it. If there's trouble any place, we usually get in on hey, it. Scotty! Scotty! Now, Come running. That's Chopper, my foreman. What's the trouble, Chopper? It's Ole. The big one clipped him when it fell. Not Ole. Is he hurt bad? Yeah, pretty bad, I guess. Looks like he's got a broken leg and he's out cold. Well, come on, Bill and Jingles. We sure have been running hard luck lately. Sounds like you've been having more than your share of accidents, Scotty. We sure have. If they're all accidents. What do you mean? Seems like some of these things almost happen on purpose. Uh, there he is, boss. He was knocking out a wedge, and he just didn't get away in time. Might have made it, but he tripped over something that... Yeah, maybe that big root there. Yeah, maybe. He's got a broken leg, all right. You'll have to be careful when you move him. Yeah, let's get him into camp. Oh, the boys can do that. The chopper, get some of the boys with a stretcher and move Ole down to the bunkhouse real careful. Okay, boss. And yeah, better send somebody for the doc. All right. He's over at mill number two, uh, patching up that man that fell against the saw this morning. Another accident? Yeah. We have one right after the other. Uh, I'll take care of it, Scotty. We'll get going right away. Hey, Slim! Charlie! Hurry over here. Give me a hand, will you? Oh, come on. Let's get down to the office. It's a good idea. I'll get the horses. Why not let the boys bring the horses, Jingles? Four miles down the trail. If you're game to try it, we can take a fast ride right down the side of the mountain. I think I know what you mean, Scotty, but I'm not so sure you can sell jingles on the idea. What are you talking about, Bill? How'd you like to ride a couple of logs down the flume? Well, I usually ride horses instead of logs. And one more question. What is a flume? Just a big ditch down the side of the mountain. Oh, you see, we turn the water from this stream into it. And we can float our logs down to the lake instead of hauling them down the trail with a team of mules. 
Oh, it's right over here. I'll show you. These lumberjacks just hop on a log standing up and ride it all the way down, Jingles. Maybe so, but a man my size is going to look pretty silly sliding down the side of a mountain balanced on an oversized toothpick. Yeah, there's a couple of logs chained together, Jingles. You know, we can ride them just like a raft. Looks like it might be real exciting, partner. Come on, let's give it a try. Yeah, let's give it a try, he says. Somehow, it don't look safe to me. Uh, it's not much danger, Jingles. It'll save a lot of time. I'll hold the log, Jingles. You get on the front. Scotty and I'll stand here on the back. Yeah, that should just about balance things up. Okay, but I still think it's like jumping off a cliff just because it's a quick way to get to the bottom. Hey, it wiggles. Uh, crouch down, Jingles. Now jump on, Bill, and I'll shove off. All set, Scotty. Here we go. Just float along slow till we get to that spillway. Then we go over the edge and down the hill. Yeah, that's the part I don't think I'm going to like. Hang on, Jingles. Here we go. Whee! Hey, that's like falling out of bed during a nightmare. Hey, we must be going a mile a minute. Yeah, not that fast. It's the noise of the water and the trees flying past to make it seem that way. Yeah, it's fast enough for me. Put on the brakes a little bit. There aren't any brakes, partner. Just hang on. Well, then how do you stop the darn thing? You don't. Just keep going faster till we hit the lake at the bottom. No, why did I let myself get talked into this anyhow? Hey, that shot was meant for us. Somebody up in the timber. Cut it out! Cut out that shooting, whoever you are! Bill, if we don't get killed on the way down, we'll probably drown when we hit the lake. Why is that idiot wasting that trying to put a bullet through it? It's raisin, 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 raisin. Kellogg's raisin brand. The breakfast food with the fruit right in the package. Raisins, raisins, raisins. Golly wranglers, there sure are a lot of raisins in a box of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. And when you pour those crisp bran flakes into your cereal bowl, you can see these sure are no ordinary raisins either. Yes, sir, these raisins are something special. They're fresh and plump and sweet. And they're covered all over with Kellogg's secret honeycomb coating to keep them that way. Just one bowl of Kellogg's Raisin Bran will show you just how extra good tasting those honeycomb coated raisins can make a cereal. And the Kellogg folks tumble lots of those honeycomb coated raisins right in with their crisp golden bran flakes to give you a wonderful cereal treat with the fruit already in it. That's Kellogg's Raisin Bran, and it's delicious. So why not round up your mom and tell her you'd like to have this well tasting cereal and fruit combination real soon? Tell her to get Kellogg's Raisin Bran, the cereal with the fruit right in the package. While Bill, Jingles, and Scotty were riding a pair of chained logs down the rushing flume at the timber camp, it was an ordinary part of the job for the timberman, but to Jingles it was a terrifying experience, especially when a sniper tried to shoot them from ambush. Dad, blame it, Bill! Shoot back at that varmint! I'm too busy hanging on. Okay. Did you get him? I don't know. I shot out a puff of potter smoke back in the trees. At the rate we're moving, we're probably out of range by now. The rate we're going, we're not long for this world. We're just liable to start flying any minute. Uh, take it easy, Jingles. We'll hit the lake in just a minute. Then what happens? Yeah, it slows us down. Get a good grip on the chain so you won't get thrown off. These big logs will slide right out on that lake like a canoe on a mill pond. I hope you're right. I'm all set. So am I. Here we are. We'll hit with a big splash, so hold on tight. I told that big moose to hang on tight. Wait till he comes to the surface and we'll fish him out. He must have gone down 20 feet. I can just see him coming up now. Why did you stop the dead flame log so fast? Scotty told you to hang on tight, Jingles. Bill Hickok, when something as big as me is going as fast as I was going, hanging on tight isn't going to do no good at all. 
Now fish me out of this light. It's cold. Uh, come on. Oh, he's quite too heavy when he's wet. There we go. Now we'll paddle you ashore and get you dried out, Jingles. Yeah, and then we'll have a little talk, Bill. If you and Jingles can't help me with my troubles, looks like I'm pretty close to the end of the trail. Bill, too many accidents been happening lately. Including the gent that tried to dry gulches, we've had three bad breaks already today. This morning, it was the saw down at the other mill, and that tree clipping Ole as it fell. Now somebody trying to shoot us. Every day as rough as this? Yeah, just about. Always something to keep us from getting the timber out. What sort of crews do you have? Are they green hands? No, they're not. They're good timber men. But they're getting kind of jumpy. They're talking about this contract being a jinx. Once they start that kind of talk, they're liable to walk right off the job. You can't blame them for that. I've had enough of this place myself. Uh, I don't blame the men, but I'm sure somebody's arranging all these accidents to cut down production so I can't meet my contract. We're darn near a week behind the schedule now. What happens if you don't deliver the timber on time? It'll plumb ruin me, Bill. Blaze Johnson holds a mortgage on all my equipment and my timber lease. If I don't get paid and don't pay him... He can step in here and take the whole shebang away from me. Well, somehow you got to deliver the timber on time and get your money. I sure do. How can I when something happens every few hours to stop my logging crews? Well, maybe you can talk to whoever's buying your lumber and get a little money on account. Or at least get an extension on your time limit. It's just my trouble, Bill. The same man that holds the mortgage is the buyer for the timber, Blaze Johnson. He's mean and he's hard. He thinks he has a chance to get both his timber and this layout of mine without it costing him a nickel. Blaze ain't a man to let a chance like that get by him. Well, looks like you signed up for a peck of trouble. Sure does. But we'll do what we can to help. And then ride herd on my cruise and see if you can find out why all these accidents are happening. Be glad to. But I think first, Jingles and I had better ride down to the valley and pay a little call on Blaze Johnson. Chopper. Plenty, Blaze. I got to talk to you. It's all right with me. Start talking. How's everything up in the timber? Blaze, we got trouble up at the camp. So what? I want you to have trouble. We got Scotty on the run now. He'll never deliver on time. And why'd you come down here where somebody might see you and get suspicious? I'm talking about a different kind of trouble. Maybe we've been pushing Scotty too hard. You're getting soft or something. We got a fortune at stake here. Millions of board feet of lumber. All delivered here to the mill for nothing. Later on, we'll take over Scotty's camps and leases, too. And it won't cost us a nickel. Yeah, I know, but... But nothing. Keep the pressure on till the end of next week, then I'll move in. When I take over, you'll get your cut. Oh, now shut up and listen, Blaze. Don't talk to me like that. I gotta tell you what happened. Wild Bill Hickok's up at the camp. Wild Bill Hickok? That's right. Him and that big overstuffed deputy of his. Scotty sent for him. They're already giving me trouble. How do you mean? Their job is to investigate all the accidents we've been having. They were there when Ola got flattened by a tree this morning. They've been snooping around all over the place. The boss says they'll be cruising around the lease from now on to get that timber moving out again. It's bad, real bad. Maybe we'd better arrange a little accident for a hickok and jingles. I tried to shoot them when they were riding the flume this morning, but I missed. This made them more suspicious than ever. You're doing all right, Chopper. Just keep trying. Right now, you'd better get out of here before somebody starts putting two and two together. Yeah, I guess I'd better... Just remember our deal, Chopper. Stick with me till I take over Scotty's layout and half of everything is yours. All right, Blaze. But it ain't going to be easy with Hickok and Jingles around. Uh, you can find a way to handle them. Now get going. And I'll take care of things at this end. Okay. Get up, boy. Get up. Stupid Chopper. Wait till I take over. He'll get his 50% right in my back and it'll be solid lead. Meantime, he can work on getting rid of Wild Bill and Jingles. That's a job I don't want to tackle. Is this place? It looks like Scotty said it would. Sure is a busy place. Maybe I can get something to eat here. I've been so busy riding herd on those loggers, I've been skipping my meals. All you've been skipping is the meals between the meals. 
Hey, look, Jingles. See that man riding out the gate? Where? Oh, yeah. Hey, it's Chopper. Probably come down here on business. Let's drive it over and say hello to him. Hold it. Ride in close to the fence here and don't let him see you. But why not? I'd like to find out what he's doing down here without him knowing about it. Hmm. Well, get over there, Joker. Stay close to the fence. That's yeah, it. Chopper's riding off without looking at us, Jingles. Let's head over to the office. I'll bet we'll find Blaze Johnson there, and I'll bet Chopper's just been talking to him. Well, there's somebody coming out of the office right now. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, that's our man, Blaze Johnson. Easy, Buckshot. Oh, now, Joker, who? Howdy, strangers. Howdy. You, uh, Mr. Johnson? That's right, and who are you, gents? My name's Hickok. Wild Bill Hickok, maybe? No, maybe about it. That's him. I'm Jingle. I've heard a lot about you both. Anything I can do for you? Maybe. If you feel like giving Scotty Welburn a break on that timber contract you hold with him. Why should I? Because Scotty's been having a lot of tough luck, that's why. There's no skin off of my nose. I want all my timber delivered by the end of next week. If Scotty can't make it, that's just too bad for him. He can make it if he doesn't have any more accidents, Blaze. I'm staying around to see that he doesn't. Oh, I tell me about it. I haven't been near that lumber camp. Maybe not, but some of your boys are up there and causing plenty of trouble. All my boys are right here, and I'd like to have you meet a couple. What's that for? Just calling the boys. I don't like what you two are hinting at, and I aim to do something about it. Bill, look at these two coming with their guns low down and tied. Hired gun slicks. All right, hold it right there. Don't listen to him, men. Run these two Jaspers off the mill property. Don't you try running us anywhere till we're ready to go. The boss say get off the property. Now get. Just try to make us get. Bill the cow! exciting it is to go to the hot rod races, watching those fast, souped-up cars burn up the track. But did you know that you can now hold your very own hot rod races? Midget hot rod races. That's right, and you get your hot rods free. You see, right inside special packages of Kellogg's Pep, you'll find a midget hot rod, a tiny metal hot rod that you can race across the floor or on the sidewalk. Or you can set them on a slope and let them race all by themselves. Golly, Wranglers, you'll find all sorts of authentic hot rod features painted right on your midget metal racers. Long exhaust pipes, racing-type cockpit, even the big identification numbers you see on honest-to-goodness hot rods. And these mighty midgets come in five different colors. That's so you and your pals can tell your hot rods apart in a race. Remember, you'll find them only in packages of Kellogg's Pep, that wonderful taste and cereal that gives you reserve power, power that sticks with you until you need it. But let's get off to the races. Get your free midget hot rods, one to a package, real soon. Remember, they're in packages of Pep, Kellogg's Pep. <laughs> When Wild Bill and Jingles went to the sawmill to reason with Blaze Johnson about the timber contract, they ran into open warfare. Blaze called his hired gun slicks to throw them off the property. Don't reach for your gun, Blaze. Both your boys are shot up already. Fine pair of bodyguards. Go get patched up, get your money, and get out of here. Both of you. Next time I'll hire a gun hands that can draw. Well, you ain't going to find any that can outdraw Wild Bill Hickok, so don't waste your time. We're heading back up to the timber camp, Blaze. But you better pass the word to whoever's working for you up there that there aren't going to be any more accidents. Yeah, and watch for the timber to come flying in here in a big hurry. Scotty's going to meet that contract of his or we'll be back. And you might find that a big accident will happen to you. up here in the woods. Looking for you, Chopper. How come all this timber is being delivered to me? Three days now, it's it's been piling into the yard. Hickok's been watching me like a hawk. Does he know you're working for me? I don't know. But he and that haybag deputy Jingles have really got this camp running. The loggers are two days ahead of schedule. Scotty's shooting logs down to the valley like a crazy man. The first thing you know, he'll have enough timber delivered to fill his contract. It's got to stop. And I'm here to stop it. Yeah, what are you going to do? Where's Scotty and them two lawmen now? Over in Scotty's office. 
I just went in to check over the latest tally sheets. Just one more question. Where's the powder house? On the side of the hill behind the office. Why? Come on. You can help me carry some powder cakes. I'm going to blow up this little scheme of Hickox right now. And while I'm at it, I might as well blow Hickok and Jingles and Scotty up with it. Well, it checks out, Bill. By the end of this week, I'll have enough timber delivered to make it. I'm going to beat Blaze Johnson at his own game, thanks to you and Jingles. Well, we're glad to help, Scotty. Jingles, I think we better get back into the woods and keep things moving. Yep, let's go. So you better turn the damper down on that stove before we leave, Scotty. It smells sort of smoky in here. Yeah, yeah, does it that? Hey, wait a minute. That's not wood smoke, it's powder smoke. It's coming up through that crack in the floor. Outside, quick! Get away from the office fast. There's a fuse burning under there. I don't remember lighting any fuse. I thought things were too good to last. Get behind this big tree. Seconds later, we'd have been blown over into the next county by now. We'd have been in three counties in three different directions. Oh, that was a close one. Not close enough. But I'll get you this time. Get behind it. Leave that gun right where it fell, Blaze. You're all through. Yeah, and you leave your gun in its holster, Chopper. You got Bill pretty mad, and he might not shoot for your arm like he did with Blaze. Chopper, you're in cahoots with this timber rattler? Yeah. But I didn't set off that blast. I ain't no murder. Neither is Blaze, for that matter. But we still got enough charges against both of you to send you up to prison for a long time. All right, get the guns, Jimmy. Sure thing, Bill. You know, it's too bad they're in the flume from here to town like the one we rode down off the mountain. I'd like to tie these two Jaspers to a log and float them down to the jailhouse a mile a minute. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. We'll be back again on Wednesday with a story that's, well, kind of special as far as I'm concerned. Right, Andy? By golly, Guy, it should be kind of special, because we're going to tell the story of Wild Bill's birthday. So long, kids. See you Wednesday. <laughs> Say, boys and girls, I know a family where the kids play a big blindfold game every morning at breakfast. First, Mom blindfolds them, and then they reach for the big Kellogg's Variety Pack on the table. And you know who wins? Why, everybody! Because you can't miss getting a cereal you like when you start with Kellogg's Variety Pack. Just think, ten of your favorite Kellogg's cereals, including Rice Krispies, Sugar Frosted Flakes, and Shredded Wheat, each in a generous, fresh-wrapped personal portion. Ask Mom to get Kellogg's Variety Pack next time she shops. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Jack Moyles, Bill Boucher, and Hal Gerard. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce, music by Dick Orant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Now this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, reminding you to listen again on Wednesday, same time, same station, for another adventure of... What? Thank you.